If you have a FireWire camera and you want to copy the contents of the tape to a DVD, OneStep DVD does that for you. Let me show you and explain what, what it does as it happens. Right now I've got my FireWire camera already plugged into my computer with a tape inside and it's already on. So I'm going to press on the OneStep DVD. Because it finds the camera, now it's asking me to insert an empty disk. So I'm going to do that right now. Once I DVD finds the disk, it rewinds the tape to the very beginning of the tape, starts playback, and it starts capturing from the tape to the hard drive. In this case, 28 hours, 25 minutes and so, it's the amount of space that I have available on my hard drive. It actually doesn't mean that you can feed that much on a DVD though. Now, if you don't want to capture everything, right now I've only got 30 seconds, uh, what you could do is just press stop on your camera, which is what I'm going to do right now. Otherwise, iDVD just keeps on going until it reaches the end of the tape. Once it figures that there's nothing else to capture, it goes through the compression process because a DVD contains video that must be compressed to MPEG-2. That's the name of the codec. The compression takes different times depending on uh, the length of your content and the speed of your computer. After the encoding process, now it goes through the process of burning the content over to the DVD. One of the things that you're going to notice is that it never asks for a menu or a theme or anything. The reason for that is because iDVD is not writing a menu. The only thing that it does is it copies the movie over to the DVD. So when you insert the DVD on the set-top box or when you play it on your computer, it just plays the movie and once it reaches the end of the movie, it just loops the movie continuously. The writing process also takes different times depending on the length of the content. One thing that you're going to notice is that regardless of how long the movie is, the writing lead-in and the writing lead-out process, it's always taking some time. There we go. At the end of the process, it just ejects the disk and it asks you if you want to make another copy. If you want to make another copy, simply put in a blank disk and as soon as iDVD recognizes it, it's going to make another copy. If you're done like I am, clicking on the Done button closes the interface and takes you back to the startup screen. Now let me put in the DVD and let's play it. So I've just inserted the DVD on my computer and the DVD player should launch automatically. There we go. Now this one is just over 30 seconds. So I'm going to play it through and I'm going to show you that at the end of the video it's just going to loop forever. That was on the video. It's not, it's not that I had a car in my studio. And then it loops. So as you can see, there's no menu, no nothing. It just copies the movie over to the DVD, and then it loops it forever. It's up to the user to press on the stop button or to eject the disk.